Hi class, let's start the chapter. Okay, today we'll talk about chapter eight, new product development. Um, just before we start this class, I just wanted to, I guess I was one of the lucky people, you see, um, one of my earlier jobs, we're talking about 20 years, which I worked for it for a long time. I worked for a company called International Turnkey System, or ITS. This company had uh, 3,000 consultant, IT consultant, and they are, they had a, a, a 28 office in 22 countries. So I was working in the uh, headquarter and uh, after I started the work or uh, as a product manager, uh, my boss called me and he said, listen, Faisal, we do have a three products that I want you to take care of it. So, okay. Said that we want you to establish the higher education IT solutions, which is that's considered to be a new product, never been done before. And we want you to look after the business of Oracle implementations and their businesses and their partnership with them. So that's a product that is being matured. And whenever you have time, please pay attention to IBM HR access. I said, okay, that can be done. This product is kind of always declining and dying. These are three different products in a different stages. And we're targeting mid-size to large size organization, whether it's on higher education, whether oil companies, and whether it's a banking system. And the product is, you know, um, these are very complicated products, has lots of features, lots of consultancy, lots of spending. So I was uh, happy to take over these three products where I had to do a new product development, which is we will talk about it. We had to do a, a mature product development uh, or sustain the development, which is um, uh, Oracle and our service to our Oracle uh, implementation and had to do a declining product, which is an HR access from IBM. So I will share this experience with you guys while we are presenting the new product development. Now, the learning objective, explaining the concept of the product life cycle, and the elements involved in each stage. So when we're talking about product life cycle, we're talking about uh, an early, mid, and decline. Describe the ways the product life cycle can be extended. Differentiate between the different type of a new product. We're also gonna talk to describe the, the adoption curve of a new product detail each steps in the new product development process. Wearable to a, to a new level. How do we connect the real and the digital world as we move toward wearable uh, computing? Interesting. The product life cycle describe the stages a new product goes through it. Products are revamped, retooled, has more tools in it, re reposition it to meet evolving consumer needs and a competitive challenge. The length of each stage in the product life cycle depends on the product itself, the categories and how it's being marked. For example, if you look at the iPhone, iPhone continues to introduce a new features and mobile and models to keep it relevant and competitive. Now, when we look at the product life cycle or PLC, we see that at the stage of introduction here, 
we see that the amount of the profit is kind of, uh, you know, at the same level is moving. As this growth happened, we see that there is a decline in the amount of the profit. And once it's reached maturity, uh, the profits start declining actually. And uh, at the declining life product life cycle, the profit starts getting to zeros. Now the reason, we'll explain it more, but the reason is when you introduce a product, there's not much competition, so you make it more profit at the growth. Suddenly you see lots of people demanding this product. So the price is going, will go up, but when maturity competition comes in and people start having, you know, know about the product and they can find something cheaper somewhere with the same, price, the profit keeps declining. And when it comes to the product life cycle declining state is like the typewriters. Uh, the profits almost reach zero or the CD players. Now, um, managing the stage of the product life cycle. At the stage where the PLC, how we deal with the competition. If we have a new product introduction in the introduction stage, there is a few competitors. When I was working on the uh, higher education solution, we had no competition. Later on, we had one comp competing with us, which is was a PeopleSoft product. Now, the, in the during the, the growth, that's where more competitors enter the market when they start seeing that there is a business for higher education solution. So competition start bringing their own solution, develop the solution or bring in an international solution. At the maturity level, is there is a many competitors in, in the market. So there is like Microsoft had its own product uh, trying to compete with us. Uh, PeopleSoft was there and other products also that were competing with us. But when it reached a decline, the, there is a reduced competition. So we kind of start, you know, slowing down uh, the other competition also start doing down. With the some competitors is leaving the market. We didn't hear that much about um, Microsoft and more products, but we kept competing with PeopleSoft. So in the each stage has a general marketing objective. So when we, when I introduced the product, I used to travel from a city to city, just introduce the concept of higher education solution and the concept of this product, how to meet the today education. I also did a product differentiation in the growth area where we start arabizing and localizing it uh, with the different, you know, dating things. Uh, dates on it, like a Hijri instead of Gregorians. So we are, we had a product differentiation. And then we suddenly, at the maturity, we saw that, especially in Saudi Arabia, people interested in banner. And there was two brand loyalties. One group saying, we want to deal the business with the, with ITS, the other said, we are interested in banners. So there were the loyalties, uh, brand loyalties. And when it start dec declining, uh, we start to do a product rationalization, um, you know, lowering, we focus on a certain edge of the product. We're not introducing the whole suite of uh, the banner. In that stage, other thing that we need to look at it is we look at the product itself. So we have the competition, we have the general of marketing objective, and we have the product. At the introduction, we focus on a new a product or the brand. So we, that's what we're doing. Uh, then in the growth, we added more features. We said that we started arabizing it, doing a hedgery, uh, different uh, um, uh, dates, 
we are able to do it. And then when the maturity, we ensure the full product line is available with the innovative and new ideas. We connected it to um, tablets, to USBs, to download your information on the spot. And we tried and declined retain the only best, uh, you know, uh, which is the SIS module. That was the best sellers between or the whole suite of banner. Banner made of financial, HR, SIS, student information system, uh, LMS, CMS, but we focused on SIS where it was the best seller. Now, each stage also has a different price, has a places, has a different promotion, has a different profit managing the state of product life cycle. In the early stage, use a skimming on penetration strategies. So we are really, we're able to put a good price on it. Uh, price started slowly decline because people soft came in. Um, we start giving some discount, but not much discount. And the price we were able to lower it, but not lower it very much. Uh, during the decline. In the place, there were a limited uh, distribution. We were focusing mostly in a rich universities and colleges in the rich countries like Saudi Arabia. Um, then the distribution has increased. So we became doing it in Egypt and Bahrain and North Africa, somewhere in Africa also. And then in the maturity, we started covering Africa and all Asia, uh, um, the Middle East Asia, part of Asia. And in the decline, the stage distribution is reduced. So while I'm explaining about the product, you probably need to go through these examples. In the promotion, we focus on a building awareness with advertising, uh, road shows, we did the road shows for it. Uh, we did an advertising on newspaper, invited the news, uh, different news to come and understand the new solution that we're building. In the growth, we emphasize on the differences versus the competition. We said that you can do everything online, check your marks, drop a course, add a course. Your parents can have an access to the solution. And then in a the maturity, we were focusing on the price Thing and sales promotions. So we wanted to, you know, make sure that they, as a price wise, it cost them less to utilize our solution and our consultancy than people soft. And when it was declining, only minimum promotion, if any. Let me give you an example. We managed to implement over 20 applications for the 20 universities and colleges. And that generated around um, $450 million. So it is another uh, 20 application, $450 million uh, for the company. So that's not a small amount to take care of it as a business wise. The profit, uh, it was a minimum profit because we were in a stage, in the introduction where stage of learning. So the cost of training, the uh, the team, the consulting team was very high. So we were not making a profit. We passed lots of uh, implementation part of it to the uh, our partner who developed this application because we were not able to implement everything. But once we started learning, then we moved on and, and increased our profit that reached their maximum in the growth. And we happened like, Every second week, we sign different college and or university. At the maturity, that's where we maximize the profit that leveled off. So we were doing at least once a month a new project. Uh, that each project takes over a year to do it. So we're gaining every month at least one project. And in the decreasing, uh, in the declining stage, it was decreasing and we try to just stick with, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, support and maintenance for what we have implemented. So the alternative product life cycle, it is that you have to look at it. Is it a high learning product or low learning product? As I said, this IT solution is a high learning product. So it takes time to really increase the sales here. But in the low learning product, you can start, you know, the sales goes high quickly. But if you look at the fashion products like clothing, uh, wearable things, electronic, they go up and down. So if you look at the jeans, for example, uh, what you in the 70s now people are wearing it. So the fashion goes up and down, for example, that's a good example. And the fade product is just like a typewriters and the CD players. After a while, it just will be declining totally in a way when there is a substitute product comes in better and more efficient. So how we extend the product life cycle if we have a product. Now, we told you that I have the product that it was, uh, you know, I started with, but I had a product that it was dying, which is IBM HR exit in the region and around the world also. So we needed to modifying the product that we did to do product improvement and line extensions. For example, what we did in this case, we, instead of running it on a DB2, we made sure it runs on Oracle RDBMS also in servers and in the mainframe. So we did some life in it. We improved the extension, the localization, the Arabization, the Middle East extension on it to just give it more life. Here in this example, we look at the craft. Craft is keeping its product lines fresh with the new items and marketing campaign. We did with add-ons uh, features and service for the IT product. And, you know, we did some marketing, had an event for uh, HR, HR solutions. We did it in Lebanon, invited all current customers, prestigious customers. The other thing that you can do is modifying the market. For example, finding a new customers, increasing a product use, creating a new situation. And we see here, uh, MEC uh, has expanded its customer base to address the need of larger range of achieved customers or consumers. What we did, we did a modification there we try to find one or more customers, which is we did. And we also created more features. So we increased, uh, promoted these increasing uh, products use and creating a new situation where we have managed to integrate best of breed IBM HR access and Oracle Financial together working as one uh, suite. So that was the creating a new situation. We reposit repositioning a product. We noticed that um, ANW did a big repositioning product by saying they are doing a healthy food and uh, growing organically. Here we see also McDonald's, uh, create your own test, uh, taste option, help re reposition McDonald in a more premium sp spot so you can create your own test. Also, uh, McDonald's known for the junk food, so they have the big line of salads just to repositioning the McDonald itself. The other thing is introduce, inter introducing a new product. And we noticed that is done a lot by Johnson & Johnson. Uh, they keep reproducing a new product similar to the old one, just to keep the line of selling. Procter & Gamble has over 3,000 products 
and they keep bringing some innovation to the new product so people keep buying it. A new product, like a new product are the life or lifeblood of a company, helping to make products relevant and to bring future revenue into the company. So when we started in the higher education solution, we were on the peak level for telco core solution and banking core solution. We were doing a big businesses there, but these businesses start declining. Competition start bringing more fierce competition. And when we started higher education and start booming, this was generating a new income for the company. So new product is really a lifeblood is because it keeps generating income. Here in the example, we look at the drones, which are unmanned aircraft, are an example of, of radical innovation. Now it's used in the militaries, in the post offices, delivering mails. Now is also in Dubai, they're trying to deliver food with the drones. So you need to look at this, the degree of product innovation. <clears throat> There is a definition, example, and market emphasis. In the, in, the, in the minor innovation, if you do a little bit of innovation, there is what you call the other type of innovation, which is a continuous innovation, keep doing continually. And there is a radical innovation, is like the, C, the DVD players uh, change to different players, like the music players becomes on iPod, for example. So in the minor innovation is required uh, no new learning by customers. As example, a new and improved detergent or diapers. And the mar market emphasis is just to gain awareness and wide distribution. But if you have a continuous innovation, is changes the consumer normal routine, but it does not require a new learning. Uh, just like um, a toothbrush, electri electrical toothbrush or digital cameras. In the first example, we spoke about diapers and detergents, minor innovation. Here is a continuous innovation. And, and in the continuous innovation, you need to advertise the point of a difference and the benefit for to the consumer why these innovations happen. In the radical innovation, requires a new total learning and the consumption uh, pattern by consumers, like a drones, wearable, electronic. You need to educate the consumer through the advertisement, a product trial, and personal selling public relation can play a major one. So there is a three type of innovation involved in a product innovation. Now, the stage of people how to adopt the product. When you start early, the innovators, uh, you know, adopt the product. So the innovators like VentureSome, higher educated, use multiple information systems. So when we started, we have that amount, uh, you know, uh, universities who is really managed by uh, professors or a president who was Western educated and aware of such solution. Then we had an early adopters, which is leaders in the social setting slightly above the average. These are the type of the people, which is you call a, a, an early adopters, is the leaders in a social setting, slightly above the average education. And then you have what you call early majorities here, which is and then you have the late majority. Early majority deliberate many informal 
social contact, and the late majorities is usually the skeptical ones who wait for others to see the others how it's done, and then they will go below, the, uh, they are usually below this uh, average socials. And then you got the laggard, which is fear of debt, neighborhood, and the friends of information. One of the things that I used to do for uh, getting support within the organization, because within the organization, you need to the adoptions also. Um, I used to go and do it myself, do the pre-sale, do the sales, and close the deal and then come and promote it. So I will have my own team interested to join me. Uh, and that's how I move it from, you know, innovator to early adopters. Now the adoption curve, there is a barrier that uh, stop the adoption. It's one of the thing is usage. Maybe they don't know how to use it, which is that's the thing. The second might see that there is no value in the product, uh, enough value, because you know we pay dollars, we gain values. So if they don't see a value in the product, they're not gonna pay for it. And they might be see there is a risk because for example, we had one university who was ha having uh, not a worry about uh, their student record to be lost from the old system to move it to the new system because the old system was running on DB2 and the new system has to run on RDBMS. And there is also psychological, people saying, no, we're gonna not, not gonna use it. They just block you, for example. <coughs> um, a new product development is really expensive to undertake. Lots of spending, lots of time, lots of effort. There is a high risk of failures because it's a new, people don't understand how they work with it. It, 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 it takes a high research cost. Uh, they recruited me because I did have a good IT background and good higher education background. So there was a high research. We had to do a research and adoption customization, localization, all these things. The time and effort on developing a pre prototype, it was uh, so difficult because for at one time, I had to have a customized laptop to meet the client, potential client. And this laptop was built in uh, Ireland, shipped to USA, and had a two different operation system that was a Millennium and Office, and then shipped to me. And that laptop was cost over $10,000. Uh, so it is uh, to develop a prototype is a difficult, expensive product launch because you have to train every people who's involved in the implementation, in the pre-sales, in sales and marketing, and also the management. <clears throat> and there is one of the things, you don't know lack of the future credibility in the market. So you might fail in one product and nobody will buy you again by your product. But how we avoid a uh, new product failure. Why new products and service fail in, in, in the beginning? Lots of product goes live, but they fail right away. Why do they fail? And this is the, the reason for failing. And this is how we solve it. The first reason is a significant point of difference. There is no differences between your product and others, or people attitude has no difference different about your product and other product. So to solve it is you need to really to determine a distinguished and meaningful point of differences for the target audience. Uh, conduct a research with the consumers and monitor the competitors product activities, 
The second issues that you might face causing fail, failing is a complete and new concept definition. When we said that um, uh, mobile diabetes, the concept was unacceptable in that time, how you connect the mobile to go locometers, to the doctors, to the nurses, to, to, to the, the whole library of diabetes and something is healthy. That concept was not 100% defined. Identifying consumer insight and clearly define the product features and benefits and de develop a clear positioning. Because nobody used a mobile diabetes solution, there is a customers, potential cons consumers did not see that benefit from it. And that might, the other case that might cause a, a failing, maybe insufficient mark, market attractiveness. So you come, come up with a product, product and people are not attractive to this product. To solve this is identify a target market with a need that is a large enough and have a growth potential to support your product. The other reason that might fail is poor execution of marketing mix. We said the marketing mix, the four Ps, ensure that the four Ps, which is the product, the price, the promotion, and the distribution or the place are aligned and attractive to the consumer. Through your marketing research, you can find out. Focus on gaining sufficient distribution to access to the customers. Access to the customers is important, but how is to get a, a sufficient distribution to them? The other thing is a bad timing. Launch a product when the consumers are eager to purchase, to solve it, solve a bad timing, and monitor the market condition and competition. So when we launch the mobile diabetes, it's a too early for the customer to adopt it. And we were the first people. So the other people said, well, you guys are the first. So they were worried about it. And we noticed that the others came and start making same innovation, but much stronger, much competitors. And uh, they took over the market. So how we approach to the growth. Now we have a product and we have a market and the product could be a, a current product or a new product. And the market could be a current market or a new market. Now, if the both is current, both of them is correct. Like the Oracle ERP that I was taking care of it. You do a market penetration, finding a ways to make current product appeals to the customers. We managed to integrate it with uh, IBM HRX, the Oracle Financial, which is, was more attractive for them. Now suddenly they get a suite of financial and HR with a lots of uh, meets their needs. Now, if the market here is a new and the product is current, what do you do is you do a market development. Here you do a market penetration. Here you do a market development. If the market is a new, reaching a new customer with a current product. Now, if you have a new market in a new product, you do a product development, which is what we did for uh, Banner, reaching the current customer with a new product. We spoke with the customers who already used some of our services. And if it's in both is a new, is you do that diversification, reaching a new customer with a, a new uh, product like 
we went and talked to one of the uh, universities in Saudi Arabia, Imam universities. So we, and it was a, a new, we came up with a new product and that universities were a new market for us as that level uh, over 50,000 students. But when you do, uh, how you do a new product development, the approach to a new product development, it needs a company structures. It needs a co cross-functional team reduce the new product development time. In, in our case, we needed the IT department, we needed the marketing department, the sales, the pre-sales all can chip in to do the development. We needed the customers also. The new product development success ultimately required an expertise of people with a different specialization. We needed some people who really can translate English to Arabic. So we spoke with the Egyptians uh, partners in university to help us to do the translation. But when you do a new product development, there is a stages that you have to do. First, you do a new product development strategy, you build it. Then you, you do idea generation. You do a screening and evaluation. You do a business analysis. You do a development, test marketing and commercializing. We'll explain each one of these stages. Now, in the first stage, a new product development, which is that one, a new number one, new product development. You will see this purpose of stages, identifying a new product development focus that meet the company objective. So you don't sell chocolate in IT company. That's not the objective. And you do the marketing information and the method used. So you do a company objective, the SWOT analysis of a company product and brand. So I had to do a business plan. My focus was the SWOT analysis. What is our strength? What is the weakness? What is the opportunities? And what's the threat? Then we did an idea generation, which is we started doing a brainstorming, brainstorming and new ideas. And this is where you do that and the marketing information and methods we use is the idea from employees, coworkers, consumers, which Arabic, because there's so many dialects in Arabic that we should be using for the university. And there is a jargon words that is used in the universities than different than in the college, different in the daily life. The second, the third stage would we say, According to this, which is the third stage screening and evaluation, evaluate the product idea and develop the concept. Internal evaluation of technical requirement and external concept test. So we go, we see how the uh, localization and arabization takes, what's the effort, how we can get the, it, the done. And then we see who is interested in this customization for the higher education solution. Then we did a business analysis or you need to do a business analysis and identifying the product features and its marketing strategy and marketing financial projection. This is a business part of the business plan and you might use a product key features and anticipated marketing mix, assessment of product, legal and profitabilities uh, uh, issues. Product features, you can do it online in that time was a main issue. You test the market and testing the product and marketing strategy in a marketplace on a limited scale, few university or a few places, you try it and if it works, after you test it is defined area, then you do a commercialization, which is launch and fully market the product in the marketplace, telling everybody we have done the customization and localization, and this is our product that meets you so and so, meet your needs, and implement all the areas of marketing 
mix. Now you have an information of what's your product, what's your price, what's the promotion, how you do it, and what's how you do this uh, distribution. And possible, you do a, a regional rollout the whole region. So that's the end of the chapter. And I'll thank you very much.